know what time it is? It's 10 a.m. and it's time to glorify God, amen? If I can get all of y'all that able, that is able to stand, could I get you to stand of the reading of the, of, of the word of God? Amen. The reading of the word of God will be coming from Jeremiah 29, 4 through 11 in the King James Version. And that said, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, until all that is carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jer Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not dismissed. And seek the peace of city, of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they, prophes for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit and I will visit you and perform my good towards my good words towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Let us pray. Father, we come now uh, with not our own minds and heart, but we come, amen, with the mind stayed on thee and a heart fixed upon your goodness and your mercy and your kindness. Father, we thank you in this hour that you have placed all of us in this place for one reason, and that is to recognize and to glorify your name. Father, we thank you now that you have given us this chance again, amen, to set the record straight, to understand, amen, what life is all about. Father, we thank you and we glorify your onerous name to all human beings. And Father, we pray as we get ready to recognize you in this service. Father, I pray that you will give us good vibe. I pray that you will give us the thought to well-being, to understand how to praise and give you glory. Father, touch the man of God as he come to bring forth the word. Father, I pray for the, for the choir as they sing to your Zion. Father, I pray even for the people that are standing in your presence. Give them strength that they will continue to do your will. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Can y'all remain standing and help us sing this?
Good morning, Mount Calvary. Good morning, Mount Calvary. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. Pilot, Pilot, will you please stand? Amen. Pastor Fox, you know that we honor and appreciate you for the man as you are. Um, God has covered you in every season of your life. And for Mount Calvary, you have truly been an answered prayer. Amen. We still know that prayer still works. Dr. Parks, we appreciate you for all that, that you've done and will continue to do. Everybody here stands behind you in full support. Anything you need from us, just ask. Um, now, Calvary will follow you as you follow Christ. Now, Calvary will follow you as you follow Christ. Um, we know that, like myself, you two were raised in the church. Um, you know the power of education and, and how education can open so many doors that others can't. But when you cope with it with your faith in God, we all know that God has the power to move mountains. He has the power to open doors that no man can shut, close doors that no man can open. And, Doc, for that, we just want to say thank you. Amen. Amen. And I was sure with second service, where I said in first service, that, I, that um, I consider it an honor and a privilege to serve under you and with you as your chairman of deacon. Um, anything you need from me, you can ask. There has never been a time where I've called you, whether you're here or traveling, where you haven't called me back or texted me. And for that, I'm appreciative of it because oftentimes some people can be unapproachable or they don't have time for people who don't hold like certain titles. And you know me, I'm not big on titles. I prefer to be behind the scenes. And to Mount Calvary, my prayer is that we celebrate Pastor Park not only on today because it's his anniversary, but on every day that he's on this side with us. Amen. We all are aware that no man knows the day or the hour when our time on this side may come to an end. And it's important to appreciate our pastor while he's here. And we should make it a point to give him his flowers all the time. We should support him through our time, through our talent, and through our service. But also, let's not forgive the aspect of giving. Giving is also a form of worship that in church, people kind of cringe upon, but we can all attest to the fact that we find money for things that are important to us. But it's also important to um, give money to the Lord's church so we can move ministry, not only at Mount Calvary, not only in Owensboro, but also throughout the tri-state area because we all know how important God is and each one of us who are still breathing is also someone's answered prayer. And for that, we owe God thank you. Thank you, Doc. Amen. Come on, Mount Calvary, we can do better than that. Come on, let's celebrate our leader this morning. Let's thank God for our leader this morning. We should see everybody in the building standing for our leader this morning. God has blessed us and he's kept us. He's kept Mount Calvary and he sent us a shepherd that we prayed for, that we voted for. So we ought to celebrate him today and every day. Amen. You know the assessment for pastor's anniversary was $50. And I'm just asking if that is in your heart to give, give that $50. But if God places something else on your heart, please give whatever God told you to give. Our pastor travels a whole lot and he does a whole lot behind the scenes that maybe some of you all don't know. He's a hard worker and he works hard not only in our ministry, but he still serves his pastor and he still serves other people that are needing of his leadership as well. So please bless your pastor with a love offering. The ushers have the um, love offering cards that you can place your um, um, your offering in or you can label that on the regular offering what you would have to go to him but let's bless our pastor let's celebrate our pastor and let's honor our pastor we may not understand or agree all the times but as long as he's following the leading of the Lord and you're following the leading of the Lord then everything is gonna work out all right let's celebrate our pastor today 
Come on, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And come on, while you clap, let's give God great praise with your hands if you be so kind. God is great, and he's indeed greatly to be praised. Now, I'm going to take this time to recognize, see, are there any first-time visitors who are perhaps visiting with us for the first time? If you could be so kind to just wave your hand at me. I'm not going to sing you out. I just want to recognize you. Come on, let's give a great hand. Uh, are there any, perhaps, any reoccurring visitors as well, meaning you, you're not necessarily a member of our church, but you show up from time to time? Come on, let's give a great hand. Amen. Listen, we know you have so many choices as to where you can choose to worship God. We thank you for choosing this place uh, as your place of worship. And even to those of you who are worshiping with us online, we thank you also and welcome you to the Sanctuary of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. You could be so kind, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you on this, the Lord's Day. Church, I have just uh, a few updates, and I promise we'll go forward in worship. Listen, looking forward uh, to worshiping God together, even on Wednesday. As of course, many of you know we've been back in Bible study. And so this week, of course, many of you know we have been studying the book, The Autopsy of a Deceased Church. And this week, I'm asking you to read chapters 3 and 4. Chapters 3 and 4, looking forward to seeing you this coming Wednesday. Amen? Amen. Listen, if you have not already uh, secured your seat, of course, as you know, on, I believe September 15th, we're going to Nashville. So Morningstar Baptist Church will celebrate their church anniversary, and I'm looking forward to Amen. You can give God great praise for that. Amen. Look forward to having a great time. If you haven't secured your seat, uh, we ask as you please, ma'am, please, sir, do that. Uh, as soon as possible. Of course, uh, the bus admission was on, was $25. We pray that uh, you please take care of that as soon as possible. Amen? Amen. Listen, if you could be so kind, uh, continue to keep in your prayers the family of the, first of all, the 4th Street Baptist Church, as well as the family of Pastor Mario Pearson. Many of you know we uh, celebrated his life on yesterday. And if you could be so kind, let me also say, I know I saw many of our members and even at uh, ushers as well uh, who helped assisted that family on yesterday. Let me first take the time to say thank you. But also I want to ask you to be so kind to keep them in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Listen, church, uh, let me also say before I keep moving, I'm so grateful to have my family is here. Amen. 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 Grateful, my grandmother's here. She's 92. I want to say 91. I'm, I was real close. I was close. 91. I'm so grateful to have many of them, my aunts, uh, cousins. I'm so delighted to have all of them here. Amen. Yeah. Listen, church, it's time to give. Amen. Come on, it's a blessing to give. It's a blessing to give. It's a blessing to give. Listen, the Bible lets us know that the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof and those that dwell therein. And this is church. God asks of us to give God a tithe. The tithe is the, is the debt that we owe. Uh, God asks of us to give God. I, the foundation is 10%. He asks of us to give him a dime out of every dollar. But then he asks us to give him a offering. That is in essence the seed that we sow. Many of you of course know my spiel by now. Listen church. Let me first say. Thank you for every act of kindness, but listen to me and hear me closely. If you cannot pay your tithes and offering, or if you have to choose necessarily, rather you give an assessment to the pastor and pay your tithes and offering, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, just pay your tithes and offering. If you want to see my heart smile today, uh, I, I will love for all of us uh, to just pay our tithes and offering. Listen, I'm, I'm always grateful again for every act of kindness. But please know, church, that ministry has to go beyond today. Amen. Amen. And so, of course, uh, if you need an envelope, feel free to raise your hand. One of the ushers will be more than happy to provide you with one. Of course, if you're also giving, many of you may be giving via the app. Uh, and even to those of you who are, again, worshiping with us online, if you would like to participate in giving, just download the Timely app. Search Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Owensboro, Kentucky. There you'll be able to give in a secure way. Are you ready to give, church? You'd be so kind to lift your gifts, your envelopes in the air, and or lift your uh, your electronic way uh, or mobile apparatus. If you lift it up in the air, let's ask God to bless our time and give it. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you 
for this opportunity to give. Thank you because every good and perfect gift comes from above. So Lord, we pray that you receive our gifts. We pray they'll be for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And these things we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're in the hands of our ushers. serve a God that continues to keep on blessing us. Listen, church, God is great. Now we're going to take a moment to pause as we get ready to go to God in prayer. 
James teaches us that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Listen, those of you who may have a desire to come closer to the altar, even while I'm speaking, feel free to do so. But we want to take a moment to pause our worship experience to go to God in prayer. I don't know about you, but let me tell you, prayer still has the ability to change things. The first Peter 5 lets us know that you and I are able to cast all of our cares upon him. It's good to know that we have a God who cares. I'll praise him. I'll praise him while I can. so kind to send your hearts. I'm going to ask Trustee Rihanna Corker to come and I'm going to ask her to come and lead us in prayer. I ask be so kind to center your heart. Praise is what I do when I want to be closer to you. How many of you know that praising, there's nothing wrong with praising God? Because when nobody else is there, he's there. When we're crying at night and we don't know where to turn to, we can always turn to him. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you and for that God I say thank you God thank you God for being there I thank you God for making ways out of no way God I thank you for being a miracle worker I thank you for being a way maker God we love you on today God we love you on today God Lord God we just worship you right now God take a few seconds to give that God everything that you owe him take a few seconds to give everything that you owe each and every individual today, God. Lord God, we ask that you touch Dr. Parks this morning, Lord God, as he brings us another word, God. Lord God, we came looking for nothing, Lord God, but from a word from you, God. Lord God, we ask that somebody leaves changed, Lord God, and a better person than they were before when they came in, God. Lord God, we ask that you continue to touch the choir, God, as they sing praises to your name, Lord. We ask that you keep on moving in Mount Calvary, Lord God. We thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do, God. Lord God, we just thank you for just being who you are, God. Lord, we ask that you touch everybody this morning, Lord God. We all need you in different ways, God. Lord God, we ask that you just have your way, God. 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 God. We thank you for being that miracle worker, Lord, that friend, Lord God, that doctor. Lord God, when we get that bad report, Lord God, we know what they say, Lord God, but we know what you can do, Lord God. We serve a mighty God, God. We serve a healing God, God, a protecting God, Lord God, a miracle working God, Lord. We love you on today, God, and we just ask that not only do you come and have your way on today, God, in Mount Calvary, Lord God, Lord God, but we just ask that regardless of what 
we see on TV and what media says, Lord God, what the news says, Lord God. We ask that you just have your way in this world, God, because we need you, God, more than ever, Lord. We love you, God, and we just ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody can testify. You can believe God has never brought you this far just to leave you now. Listen, church, it is preaching time. The Bible teaches us that faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So delighted to welcome back to this place uh, my brother, the Reverend Dr. George L. Parks Jr. You'd be so kind, let's give him a great hand. He serves as a senior servant of the Metropolitan Baptist Church of Largo, Maryland. Uh, he's a doctoral mentor to some students at the United Theological Seminary. He's a husband and a father. Uh, Listen, church, of course, you know, uh, anytime we bring a guest preacher, uh, listen, if you know the preacher is saying something good, you all not uh, wait to the end to encourage the preacher. While he preaches, you ought to test by saying amen. amen. So listen, as the choir is coming to give us one more, our sermonic selection in preparation to hear the word of God. Please welcome the, in the personality of the Reverend Dr. George L. Parks, Jr. You'd be so kind to of stretch your hands towards your preacher and say, Dr. Parks, Dr. Parks. preach the word. Preach the word. Pass, Dr. Parks, Dr. Parks. Preach, the word. preach the word. And we will be a witness. The choir is coming. The next preacher voice you hear is Dr. George L. Parks.
Will you pray with me on today? Lord, we thank you for the expected hope that one day that we will put on robes of victory and we will be able to tell our testimony how we made it over. And Lord, even while we're going through, give us hope to know that there are better days ahead. So now, Lord, as we come to hear your word, prepare preacher and people. Touch our hearts that we may lean in and hear your heartbeat for our lives. Lord, our prayer is the same as in times past. Speak, your children are listening. Speak to the end that the saints will be encouraged speak to the end that maybe someone who is unsaved or unchurched that will come to know you in a clear and intimate way and lord we trust that when you will speak you will speak in ways that are beyond our imagination and even beyond our human comprehension lord let no flesh be glorified but let your word go forth it is in jesus name we pray and have hope and everyone who believes said amen church come on this is the day that the lord has made we choose to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it church let me express my profound gratitude and share my excitement of how i'm grateful to be here with you uh, as you celebrate today two years of pastor and people working together so come on let's celebrate your pastor and while you're celebrating your shepherd celebrate yourselves I won't say this because he's my brother, uh, but I will say this. Uh, you are blessed to have a good preacher, but not only are you blessed to have a wonderful preacher, pastor, but also he's a good person. And I can, you don't always find those two in the same. Every good preacher is not necessarily a good person. And every good person may not always be a good preacher. Uh, but you are blessed to have both in the same. And I trust and I'm grateful, as I shared with the 8 o'clock service, uh, Pastor Parks does not have family here in Orangeboro. Thank you for just not being members, but also being family and looking after uh, Dr. Parks. Uh, so happy to see my family here today, as uh, Pastor's already shared. So good to see you. Let's thank God for this choir who have led us in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> such a powerful, profound way to the associate minister and to the deacons who keep the pastor's arms lifted in ministry and those who serve alongside of him. Today I want to share a word of encouragement. I want to call your attention to the 134th number of the psalm. Psalm 134, and when you have that scripture, you can simply say amen. Listen to how my Bible reads. Today I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. This is how it reads. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. Listen to it one more time. Come bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. I want to talk about what the Lord's helping your prayers all night long. All night long. Beloved Lionel Richie, one of the legendary music voices of our time, performs a song entitled All Night Long from his album entitled Can't Slow Down. Lionel Richie within this song invites his audience to slow down, take a step back from the jet pace of life and from the pressures and the responsibilities of existence to step back and have a night of fun. The song invites his listeners to become lost in fun and ecstasy for the duration of the night. May I suggest to you, church, many of us can find ourselves engaged in or enslaved to a multiplicity of things in the night season. 
So many things can happen in the night season. Nighttime is a peculiar time of day. Nighttime is when oftentimes that part of the evening when you have worked so hard and you finally get home and the night begins to come in and you find refreshment. Night for some is that welcome part of the evening that when stresses are high and debts are high, you finally find a piece of solace when nighttime comes. Nighttime for many of us is a welcome part of the day, but when you and I flip the same side of that coin, for someone can testify that night is also a trying season. I believe I say that again. For someone, nighttime is a trying season. It is when your anxieties are high and it seems like nothing is going right and it feels as if Murphy's Law is in full effect of your existence. All that can go wrong has gone wrong. Nighttime. Nighttime is when you try and endeavor to raise your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, but while you're raising them, they don't don't look like the child that you are raising. Nighttime. Nighttime is when you and I turn on CNN and MSNBC and we see politicians acting like children. That's Nighttime. Night. Nighttime is when you come to church and you hear the songs of Zion and you hear the prayers of intercession and you hear the word proclaimed and you leave church not feeling good or God. That is nighttime and somebody can testify it does not matter how long you live it does not matter your seniority in church all of us sooner or later will have to shake hands with a night season night season is just not simply a time of the day but it is also an emotional designation in the words of Saint John of the cross you and I will all have to deal with seasons of dark nights of the soul and one poet says you and I will find ourselves babysitting the night and can I suggest to you if you've never been there keep going to bed at night getting up in the morning <laughs> however what is unique this text that has been read in our hearing invites you and I to engage God in the night season May I suggest to you that that requires a shift. That takes another level of spiritual maturity and spiritual dexterity to engage God in the night because most times we always celebrate that God is a God of the day. That God can give us bright moments and bright seasons. But may I suggest to you that anyone can worship God when things are well. Anybody can serve God when you are a picture of strength. Anybody can continue to move in leadership when it feels like the wind is at your back. But beloved, may I remind you that it takes another level of strength to say I'm going going to engage God even in the night season. I, I, I know that we buy into this candy cane theology that listen I'm going to walk in a bright light. I'm going to walk in the healthy place and you ought to. We ought to engage that but can I tell you that you can also engage God in the night season because we serve a God that works well on the night shift. How dare you look at somebody today and say, neighbor, we serve a God that works well on the night shift. You don't, you don't believe me? Ask the children of Israel when they were navigating the uneven terrain of the wilderness and God said, I will cause a pillar of cloud to follow you by day and a pillar of fire by night. That's a God that works well on the night shift. As Paul and Silas, they were simply trying to preach the word of God and them preaching 
preaching the word of God landed them in a prison cell and while Paul and Silas are in jail they could have thrown a pity party they could have shook their fist at God and say God I was doing this for you but instead Paul and Silas said let's have praise and worship even in the night season it was in the night season where God interrupted the regular scheduled programming of Mary's life and said blessed are you among women and you will bring forth into the world this Christ child can I tell someone stop rejecting your night stop cursing your night stop saying it's the devil God may have you in a night season so God can show up in ways that you never imagined we, we serve a God that works well in the night this psalm here Psalm 134 is a psalm of ascent these were songs that were sung as the people went into worship Psalms 134 and Psalm 133 church appears to be fraternal twins Psalm 133 opens with the unity that is required for worship. He says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that is poured down on the head that comes down the beard and it moves down to the skirts of Aaron's garments. He says, listen, there is nothing like when people come together. And we've experienced it today, church, when everyone is on the same page in worship. I, I think I ought to put a pin right there. Listen, when everyone is unified, it invites the presence of God to free flow in our expressions. But then he says this. Now listen, he says, notice, there is unity required for worship. But Psalms 134 reminds us, once you get to church... Don't forget to do what you came to do. And I don't think I ought to say a word right there because, listen, you've gone through too much for you not to worship God. You, 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 you got up early this morning. You had to get in your car. You had to wrestle with children and you had to wrestle with your own emotions for you to come into God's house and to enjoy God's air and to have God's strength and sit as if move me if you can. Somebody ought to be able to tell Justify. When I come to church, I mean to praise the Lord. The pilgrims are coming near the end of their journey. They're leaving the holy city. They have been celebrating church. Look at the context. They are leaving the place of worship. But while the sun is tiptoeing across the western horizon, they step back and say, whatever you do, don't forget to praise the Lord. They, they can leave the temple knowing that the temple is in good hands because the Levites are there to continue the work of the Lord. There has been a question that is raised in the Westminster Catechism, and this is the question. What is the chief aim of man? And the response is the chief aim of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Let, let me give you the simple meaning of that. Listen, it simply says our chief aim is not to get more money. Our chief aim is not to be affirmed by the outside world. Our chief aim is to give God glory, honor, and adoration, and this is the piece, and we ought to enjoy doing it. If nobody else enjoys worshiping God, it ought to be the people of God that has been brought from death into life, have been brought out of darkness into the marvelous light. So this is the central aim of this little sermon. God unceasingly invites those who have experienced his love and blessings to bless God in return. And this is the word for us, give God honor perpetually, knowing that God has a mutual response for your effort. Give God honor perpetually, knowing that God has a mutual response for your effort. I want every church to move to this point of spiritual maturity that your worship, your praise, and your excitement is not based on anybody else. 
but your praise, your worship, your preaching ought to be based on the goodness of God, knowing what God has done for you. What is the chief aim of man? The chief aim of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So let's walk across this piece of poetry and see what God has for us to learn. Listen to the text. There's an invitation to worship. Listen to it. Come. Bless the Lord. All ye servants of the Lord. This psalm opens with the universal words of invitation. Come. Come, come into God's presence. But then he says, come and bless the Lord. This is not a catch-all. He says, Bless the Lord. This word bless literally means to kneel, to bow down, to give God honor. Wait a minute, to make a fuss. I, I want to push this. If we're not careful, we make a fuss over so much stuff. We, 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 we make a fuss. We're making a fuss over right now in this political season, and it's a worthy fuss. Who's going to be the next president? We make a fuss over what will our financial portfolios look like in retirement. We, we make a fuss over our children's sports, and rightfully so, because we want our children to uh, excel and to exceed our expectations. In church, we make a fuss over who sits here and who sits there and what we're going to wear. But this is the question. When was the last time you and I made a fuss over God? He says, come, bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord. He, he says God is worthy of praise and if we're not careful it's so many of us that's making a fuss over stuff that when was the last time? You, you made a fuss over God but notice this invitation is specific. Come bless the Lord all ye servants. I, I like it. It's, it's not a catch all. It's specific. This invitation is to the priest and the Levites. This is Old Testament. This is for the individuals who have worked in the temple, who know God intimately, who have experienced his love and have dedicated themselves to the work of God. Let's step into this a little better. Who else should bless God other than you and I? Who else should be lifting up God after all God has done for you? None of us should be exempt from worshiping God because you and I are all servants of the Lord. Come, bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord who stand by night. Not only is this invitation is to the servants, but, but he says worship is strengthening. I, I like this because it's aimed to the priests and the Levites, and I think this is appropriate for today because these were individuals who worked in the temple. Their life was their work. Their work was their life. They would spend hours in the temple, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, explaining the book, reading scriptures, offering prayers, and offering sacrifices. This was heavy work. Frustrating work, sometimes fatiguing work. And this is the word for the people of God. If anyone ever thinks ministry is easy, that means you've never done it before. That there are times that ministry work is tiring. You don't believe me? Ask Moses. God says, hey, Moses, your people are engaged in a war. But he says, listen, you all can win the war as long as you keep the rod up. The rod was the manifestation of the power of God. He says, Moses, as long as you keep the rod up, your people will win the war. Moses kept the rod up and the people were winning the war. But this is the problem. God never told Moses how long he had to keep the rod up. It was an inevitable amount of time. And somebody can testify, you can do a God thing. You can do a good thing you can do the right thing but you still get tired and I wonder is there anyone here in Mount Calvary that can testify I've been walking with God but I still get tired I pay my tithes but I get tired I show up to choir rehearsal and vacation Bible school but I get tired 
And maybe that's a word for us. We ought to stop acting like the Christian walk is such an easy walk. That you and I will get tired. But he says no matter how tired and frustrated you become. He says whatever you do. Don't forget to worship God. It reminds us of Isaiah 61 and 3. Where he says arise in the night hours. And make your request known to God. He says listen this thing called worship. When you worship it can give you strength. As Job, Job would testify to us, hey, I lost it all. Wife, cattle, children, in the words of the song, everything I had was gone. But when you look at Job, even when he lost it all, the Bible says he tore his robe and he ripped off his mantle and he worshiped God. Can I tell you something, church? Listen, when you worship God, worship has a way of lifting the veil of darkness. I think i say that again. When you and I give God our all, no matter what, it has a way of lifting lifting the veil of darkness have you ever been in a storm that in between you coming in Mount Calvary and you leaving out you heard a prayer you heard a song you heard Pastor Parks uh, preach a sermon and in between you coming in and you leaving out you left out singing I feel better so much better listen worship has a way of lifting the veil but I got something good even when God doesn't lift the veil. God will give you strength to navigate the darkness. I dare you look at somebody and say, neighbor, God doesn't take everything away, but God will give you strength to navigate the darkness. I can testify that God hasn't moved every mountain out of my way. He hasn't moved every stumbling block, but the Bible says that even when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard the psalmist says the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear when my enemies and my foes came upon me to stumble and fail listen he says listen the Lord gave them spiritual vertigo he let them stumble yeah. worship is strengthening it's for the servants but it is also specific listen to it church come Bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. He says, when you come into God's house, your behavior ought to be specific. Lift your hands as a sign of appreciation and adoration to God. That's the first meaning. And he says this, maybe you and I would do a whole lot better if we thought of worship as an opportunity and not an obligation. I, I think I'll say that again. You, you and I would take more advantage and be more freer because this is the word you and I need to remember. We never know when it will be our last opportunity. He says, lift up your hands. But then there's another meaning of this phrase. Not only to lift our hands in adoration. Can I give it to you? But it is also to lift our hands in supplication and someone needs to know this is the posture of prayer there are times in your life in my life where we don't always have a hallelujah there are seasons where we are not always full of excitement and demonstrative behavior for you and I to show how much we love God there are times in our life that all we have is tears have you been there? That there are seasons and experiences that there are times where you are full of joy. But then there are times that the spirit of melancholy and anxiety grips you so that it feels as if you are locked in a prison with no bars. But may I tell you something? 
listen, your tears is worship as well. Just as much as your praise and your hand clap and your dance, your tears are, are worship because this is the word authentic worship doesn't need any cosmetics. God says, I take exactly what you have to offer and I will receive it to myself as an act of worship. But it's your job to continue to engage God. Uh, Dr. Charles Adams in his sermon entitled, Why Praise the Lord, the late Dr. Charles Adams, who passed at the Hartford Memorial Baptist Church of Detroit, Michigan, he preached a sermon on Why Praise the Lord. He tells the story uh, that he found on CNN of a woman who saved her life savings, this was some time ago, and paid $100,000 for her dream house at the time in Silicon Valley. She shared her expression in her, of, of God's blessings in her life by the way she maintained the outside and the inside of her house. She cleaned it. She kept the lawn manicured. But you know, anytime you and I endeavor to do anything, the enemy will always raise its ugly head. Somehow or another, the bank and the homeowner association came up with the idea whoever failed to pay their homeowner association fee they will be eligible for foreclosure we, we don't know if this woman just simply forgot or if her senior citizen funds ran low but one way or another her house was foreclosed on the house that she worked for, the house that she had saved for, her dream house, the home that she maintained was simply foreclosed on. And she got home and found individuals at that time throwing her belongings out. The home that she worked for, saved for, the manicure lawn full of her belongings. Somehow CNN picked up the story. And while they picked up the story, they found the woman. They began to look for the woman, and they found the woman in all places. She was in church dancing before the Lord like never before. While they were showing the story, nine other lawyers saw her case, and they began to arbitrate on her behalf, and they began to lobby, and the woman was able to get her home back. What are you trying to say, Pastor? All I'm trying to say is you do your part, and heaven can decipher what you need. Why don't you look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't have a whole lot, but I do have praise. I, I may not have a lot of friends. I may not have a lot of money. I may not have a lot of energy or connections, but the one thing I can do is praise the Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. That's the invitation to praise the Lord. Give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But finally, there's just two moves I want to lift up in this text. The invitation to worship, but there's also the commendation for worship. Listen to what the text says. May the Lord bless you from Zion. He who made heaven and earth. I, I like this psalm because this psalm opened or it closes rather like the psalms of ascent open. It says, may the Lord bless you from Zion. Uh, listen, Psalm 121 opens like this. I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help comes from the Lord. This psalm closes like the psalms in. He says we ought to bless the Lord and then there's this reverse. There is this unique reversal. May the Lord bless you from Zion. There was a call for the people to worship God. Don't you miss this? But then there's a shift when the people worship and bless God. God will in turn turn around and bless us. May the Lord bless you from Zion. This sounds a lot like Numbers chapter 6 verse 23. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And I don't know about anybody else. I like to call this the miracle of corporate worship that God sees you and I here blessing him. And God says this, no matter what you do, I'm going to remind you that you can't out bless me. I, I see you on Plum Street and I see you blessing my name. God says I'm willing to take on a, take on the role of a servant to bless my children. We see that in salvation in the garden of Gethsemane when Jesus is praying in the garden. It's a night season. He says let this cup pass from me and the Bible says Jesus is praying so hard that great drops of blood begin to come down from his brow and he goes through a crisis of belief and he comes to the culminating decision not my will but your will be done oh I like this worship is like planting seed when he when you go to the grocery store, you pass by the seed section and you rejoice when you get to the produce section. But sometimes you and I need to learn how to shout in the seed section. Because this is the word, every seed has to go through a season of insignificance. Seeds don't look like much. But then seeds also have to go through a season of invisibility. You, you, it doesn't look like much is going on under the ground. But, but, but while there is the season of invisibility, there is something going on under the ground in God's divine nature. Something is miraculous going on between the soil and the seed. And this is the word if you learn how to handle seasons of insignificance and seasons of invisibility, God can give you a season called increase. God bless you, Bob Calvary. I'm done. This is the miracle of corporate worship. That no matter what happens, you and I have to make sure that we continue to worship God. Yeah. Just look at somebody and say, I know it's dark. I know it's dark. Tell them, I, I know it's depressing. Know it's depressing. But you keep on worshiping God. And you know, sometimes when you're worshiping, you and I have to learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Stories told about a father and his child who went into the grocery store. They went into the grocery store, and while they were in the grocery store, the baby would not be consoled. The baby kept crying and crying and crying, and the father kept saying, Jacob is going to be all right. Jacob is going to be all right. He goes through the produce section and it says, Jacob is, is going to be all right. Jacob is going to be all right. He goes through the bakery area. Jacob is going to be all right. And while he's going through the store, he's trying to give the baby a bottle and a pacifier. And he kept saying, Jacob is going to be all right. The baby is not being consoled. And a woman picks up his trail and she keeps a safe distance and she begins to follow him. And he keeps saying, Jacob, is going to be all right. Jacob is going to be all right. Finally, he makes it to the checkout counter and the baby is still crying. Have you ever had a baby that won't stop crying? And all he can say is, Jacob is going to be all right. The woman kept a safe distance and she says, finally, hey, let me hold Jacob. He says, excuse me. He says, let me hold Jacob. He, she said, he says, excuse me. She says, let me hold the baby. Jacob. He says, no, no, no. The baby's name is Randy. My name is Jacob. I was just trying to encourage myself. Why don't you look at somebody and say, neighbor, life may be hard, but you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. God bless you, Mount Calvary. On my way back to D.C., shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, the nighttime may be hard. The nighttime may be depressing. 
but whatever you do, keep on worshiping the Lord. And sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Have I got a witness? And when you encourage yourself, the larger you make God, the smaller your problems become. Look at somebody today and say, God bless you, but I came to lift him up. Have I got a witness? to reach the masses uh, men of every birth for an answer Jesus gave the key he said if I if I be lifted up have I got help in the room I, I draw all men unto me I got a question for you have you any rivers that seem incrossable? Have you any mountains that you can't seem to tunnel through? Shake somebody's hand and say, God specializes in things that seem impossible. Have you any afflictions? And the doctors said they've done all they can do. But look at somebody and say, neighbor, God specializes in things that seem impossible. And he can do what no other power Holy Ghost power can do. It was night season on a hill far away. It was night season when they took my Savior and nailed him to the cross. It was night season when they put nails in his hand. It was night season when they put a spear in his side. It was night season when they laid him in Joseph's new tomb. But they forgot what he said. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. Look at somebody and tell a neighbor, this is the last time I'm going to bother you. But tell them, I got a word for you. Tell a neighbor, I'm so glad that night seasons won't last always because we've been made in good for a night, but joy, hey, joy will come in the morning. Do you believe it? Shout it. Yes. Shout it. Yes. Shout it. Yes. Oh, yes. We're standing all over the building. Night seasons will come. And may I remind someone that night seasons are not an indication that you are outside of the will of God. Not all night seasons. Someone sung the song that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. But on this pastor's anniversary, can I remind someone, sometimes the most dangerous place in the world is to be in the center of God's will. But this is the word, even when you and I find ourselves in a dangerous place, don't miss it, you and I need a discipline response that God, no matter what it is, I am determined to worship you. And worship is sometimes with expressive thought, demonstrative behavior, 
But even for someone who's on the other side of night, also your worship can be tears. And can I remind you, God sees your tears as worship as well. Clap your hands if you receive the word. Listen, if you're in a sanctuary, if you'd be so kind and stand on your feet. Maybe somewhere here today unsaved or unchurched, maybe that word was just for you to come here, led by a Christian experience or even candidate for baptism. Maybe I'm talking to someone who's perhaps worshiping with us online. Listen, if you don't mind, just put in the comments, set your information. We'll con someone from our church office will contact you this week. But maybe somewhere in the sanctuary, maybe that again, that word was just for you and I want to encourage you not to put off tomorrow what you can do for today tomorrow may be too late perhaps god right now is knocking on the door of your heart he's asking if you'd be so kind to just let me in perhaps you've tried everything else and everything else has failed the thing and the good news about our god is we serve a god who doesn't fail so whether you're here unsaved or unchurched, come. God right now is ask you to try me. Step out on faith. Be so kind, every head bowed, every eye closed again. Maybe somewhere here really may needs to make a decision. And all I want to do is I want to take a moment to pray with you. The Lord will touch your heart to give you the strength to make a decision to make Jesus Lord of your life. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that you see us despite of our tears. And that you're still with us regardless of whatever we may face. So Lord, bless my brother, bless my sister who may need to make a decision. Letting you know let them know, Lord, that they're not amongst judges, but that they are amongst friends. And this is good ground be planted. We promise we won't ever glorify ourselves, but in everything we do, we'll give your name all the glory. We give your name all the praise. In Jesus' name. He's working it out. And we've done what the Lord has commanded. Yet there's still room. Come on, we be so kind. Enough. Come on, let's give God great praise with your hands. And while you're still clapping, come on, let's give God's manservant a great hand as well. Amen. Listen, church, you can stand on your feet. We're getting ready to go. Allow me first to say thank you to all of those. Uh, 
we've given something, you know, it's been so kind to my family. Let me at least take this moment uh, before someone comes because I have a tendency to forget. Uh, I want to at least take this moment to say thank you. Thank you. Come on, trust the ears. Good morning, church family. How y'all doing? First of all, I want to say uh, thank you, Pastor, for being our pastor for the last two years. And I'm on behalf, up here, behalf of the adult choir. Uh, you know, we've had our ups and downs. We've been without a, a music director for a long time. But I want to say thank you for encouraging us to keep us to stick with it. Even when we didn't have directors, sometimes you kept you was in here with us, help us practice, get the songs, and you just encourage us, keep us going, and, and not give up, and always remind us the real reason why we're singing and do what we do. So we want to say thank you, we appreciate you, we love you, and we continue to look forward to this Christian journey as you as our pastor. So thank you and we love you. All right, Doc, um, <laughs> um, this is a small token of uh, thanks from the members of Mount Calvary. It's impossible to quantify how much you mean to us. Um, we pray that this is used to benefit you and how you see fit. Pastor Parks. Listen, church, it's been a wonderful day. Again, let me take this time to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Even to all of our guests and our visitors, let me say take this time again to say thank you for coming and worshiping with us. We're getting ready to go. But again, looking forward to seeing you this coming Wednesday in Bible study. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, of course, a meal has been prepared on the other side. The only thing I'm asking, those are the mouth. I'm only thing I'm asking, if you could be so kind to let our guest uh go first i promise i'm pretty sure there's more than enough for everyone amen amen listen allow me to give you this blessing now may the grace of god the sweet communion of his holy spirit allow it to rest reform and renew this day and the days ahead until we meet and jesus feed the bishop of the church the bishop of our souls go in peace go in love go and serve have a wonderful weekend thank you so much be blessed have a wonderful day amen.